Welcome to the Lightworkers Academy Session 2 Redo. Thank you for your patience as we get this second session going here. Um, so today we're going to discuss the Divine Earth Alchemy, a little bit on the Chalice Energetics and Duality, and then we're going to step into the Wisdom field. So today we'll have um, some discussion and a bit of um, journey work. So here we go. Let's step into this beautiful sacred space that is this class. And so stepping in with the heart, just putting your attention to your physical heart where you find your light, your soul's fire. Imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth and breathing in that supporting light of the earth up through the feet and into the heart. Making that beautiful grounding connection heart to heart with the earth. Next, we connect heart to heart with creation, with you. Source, Soul, Creator, God, however you see and say that. But it is truly you. Breathing in that supporting light, allowing that to expand your heart. And just allowing your light to step in more fully into the physical, into your here now presence. So when we do the Trinity breath of connecting with Earth, connecting with creation, and becoming that being who is grounded, connected, in the heart space, expansive and full of their light, you can take this a step farther in what we call the Divine Earth Alchemy. Because as we connect heart to heart with the Earth, she is a beautiful, powerful transformer of energies. And she is here in support. And so when we connect heart to heart with the earth, feel into this for a moment and just be with that heart of the earth, feeling that connection between your heart and her heart. And just imagine that energy of the earth enveloping your entire being. That light, that grounding, that support, enveloping every cell of your body in between every cell. And then allow the earth to simply take those things that no longer serve you any old dense energies in your field. Just take a breath, allow the earth to take and transform those energies. Whatever it is that is not being released, this is where we bring in the other aspect, the divine of you your soul, your light, your consciousness. So as you are in that heart space, imagine your light that's in the heart expanding, growing, so that your light permeates every cell of your body in between every cell. Just keep taking in breaths and allowing your light this is not a trying or a doing exercise. When we work with the soul, we simply open up and we allow your soul, your light, your consciousness to flow more fully into creation. As your light flows in, it too begs for the release of all dense energies that no longer serve you. Programs, beliefs, emotions, traumas throughout all lifetimes.
And again, it's just a softening and allowing both the earth and your soul, your light, to release those things that no longer serve you that you will allow. So doing this breath, this Trinity breath, and going beyond and really connecting and allowing with the energy of the earth and the energy of you is such a powerful and transformational, quick, easy space to step into when you are burdened, when you're just, you're just so in your human pain body, thought body, that you can't get out, that nothing's going right, that you just feel misaligned with everything. Stop and go into the heart. This is the easiest way to come into alignment and to release those things that are right up close and ready to go. So this is really a powerful exercise for not only coming into alignment, grounding, connecting, but also for doing that release work as things come up. Because again, the earth and your soul are both there in support. So as we move on, we are going to discuss the chalice energetics a little bit. Now, this is really a prep class. This Lightworkers Academy is all about us stepping into our power. The light we wield is ours. The light we work with is your light, your consciousness, your soul. And it is one of the most powerful things in this reality creation is your light, your consciousness, your intent, your choices, which we're really going to get into a lot of this deeper stuff. But for this primer, before we start to anchor columns of light and go out into the world and do stuff that is outside of us, we really must become that conscious light first and releasing the things that taint our view on stuff um, gosh because we carry so much perspective based on our own traumas our past life stuff our old programs our beliefs our the emotions that get tied up into it because of what we carry within and we're triggered it causes an emotional reaction there's so much that um, can really taint our perception as we are out doing work and when we go out into the world and do the work we want to be as clear and aligned as possible because this takes us into the whole concept of duality, of light and dark. Myself, for eons, I have been this master angelic warrior of light, always fighting the dark. I've also been on the other spectrum throughout my lifetimes. I still remember a lifetime here on the planet before Gaia was here, where I was a big dark horned being. I was dark. Your soul expresses as expression, as experience, without judgment of dark or light. This is a world of duality for experience. This plane of existence that we live in is all about, has been, all about soul growth and learning, about playing in all of duality creation. And you are creator. And it would be a disservice to the soul if we only experienced the light, fluffy butterflies, fluffy bunnies and butterflies, all this stuff. You know, true soul growth experience is living in the spectrum as a soul incarnate throughout all the lifetimes. So duality in this world of soul growth and learning that 
in the beginning of this universe, there was the black and the white, the light and the dark. And you can see it as the yin-yang, and it is always trying to come into balance. It has been the driving force of creation in this universe and duality, is the dark and the light, always a balance. That has been the engine of creation. Since the beginning, there has also been not only this dark marble, this white marble, but there has been this crystal clear, pure consciousness light. Pure, pure light. And it's what we simply call the chalice energy. I know it has some other name, but we've seen it being um, held in the Essenes, uh, the Knights Templars with the chalice. Basically, it was um, just holding the awareness of this crystal clear, pure light. It does not fight the dark. It does not take sides with the light. It simply is. This crystal clear, pure light, is, it's, it's about consciousness. It's about that higher connection. It is about everything beyond the dark and the light, the yin-yang. And so as this chalice energy comes in, we have seen that this chalice energy that permeate that has permeated the entire earth, it's in all the tools that we create here at Twisted Sage Studios, this chalice energy. When this chalice energy first came in a few years ago, we noticed that everything began to change in the work that we do in that we were going back through our release work, we began to see it as uncreating creation that no longer serves, miscreations, um, things that were created, that we created in our life that no longer serve us. They were there for a purpose in the old world of duality, of soul growth learning, of just coming here for the experience. And now that we are stepping out of that old paradigm of soul growth learning, of duality experience, we're bringing in that chalice energy and we're more aligning with that and that is it's not um, so the chalice energy is simply holding the space to allow us to uncreate creation that no longer serves is basically the simple way to put it um, you know and that's I can't describe what it is um, this clear pure light but I can say that it has really gifted us the ability to begin to do deeper work um, so the chalice is going to be a part of just just for you to be aware that it is a part of of the work that we do that it is it is here to help hold space it is here to help us step out of the old creation of the driving force of creation of duality of soul growth and learning because we are here for new better things we are here to become conscious creators we are here to become realized embodied masters is truly where i want to take this class is to bring us closer to realization and that's that's a lot of untangling, but the chalice energy can help with the untangling because we've become so enamored in this fight of dark and light. I know I have. Like I say, I have been a master angelic warrior of light fighting the darkness through many eons. And in this lifetime, I, I surrendered. As soon as that chalice energy came in, I began to surrender the fight. And it has shifted everything. But again, that's hmm, this concept isn't necessarily for the light workers class. This is going to be for our following class. The light workers class is more about catching the people who are out there fighting the dark. And to just give them more tools to do that work. I'm not saying that you can't just stop fighting the dark. But I'm saying that you can begin to use these tools to where you're going to do the work and you're going to find that you'll come into your realizations about what dark and light truly is. 
Um, hmm, but that's not for this class. Sorry, it, it's still um, it's still quite the concepts because for for me getting from that Master Angelic Warrior of Light to where I'm at right now, and I'm still shifting. Obviously, you know, I haven't been able to do a webinar here for about a month because I'm still, you know, we are ever shifting, but I'm stepping more in to that whole realization space of everything is your energy and the soul does not judge dark and light experiences. It is all experience for wisdom. So I'm kind of trying to bring a concept in here for our next exercise, which is this field of wisdom. So if you imagine through your lifetimes that you have had all of these experiences, good, bad, ugly, beautiful, all spectrums of experience throughout all these lifetimes. And we carry these things. There are our lifetimes that we have lived are still there. They affect us as we become more of our consolidated sovereignness of who we are. We are bringing in more of more of our light, more of our experience. We're bringing in those soul aspects. We're bringing in those lifetimes, those past lives, future lives, other lives. We're bringing everything that we are as a soul into center. This is the light that we work with, is our light. And so to step you up in frequency and vibration, it's about releasing those things that are denser in vibration. So experiences, good, bad, ugly, beautiful, we bring those into wisdom. So my understanding of the soul and the incarnation and the experience here on this planet is, is that there is source, the great I am, pure consciousness, I am. He wanted to have experience. It created soul. Soul came along it had all of these incarnations everywhere. So as we talk about here in the future about going into this, um, this wisdom field and the zero point meditation space, imagine if you will that there is the zero point space. It's a big circle here in the middle. Then there is forward and backward time, higher and lower dimensions, and there's all these little dots out here. Each one of these little dots is an incarnation, an experience. Good, bad, ugly, beautiful, otherwise. All of these experiences, all of these dots. And then we have your soul, zero point space. This space of the soul is untainted and untaintable. Your soul cannot be harmed. It never goes out of existence. Your soul is flipping amazing and beyond comprehension. But your soul, let's say this zero point space, this field of wisdom, this field of light and of consciousness, you have all these experiences. In the zero point meditation, what we're going to do is we're going to take this little experience, this little experience here with all of its traumas and programs and beliefs and energetic attachments and everything else, we're going to magnetize and bring it into center. When we bring these experiences into center, this transformative space of the soul, the zero point space, takes those experiences and brings them in as wisdom, light, and consciousness. This is how you grow brighter as a soul. The one thing that we can do as a human is, is that we can do this work of amassing our wisdom, our light, and our consciousness. And that allows us to grow bigger, brighter, and have access to so many more potentials of creation. So this is what the zero point space is about. 
is it is about expanding your consciousness, becoming brighter and lighter. And so that is really what healing is. We see healing of the physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. We see healing as simply release and rebalance. When you're going into the heart space, when you're grounded, connected, you come into balance very easy. So the release part is what we're going to be doing, but we're doing this in a new way, which is bringing all of those experiences into wisdom, bringing it into that zero point space of the soul that's untainted and untaintable, but it holds wisdom, consciousness, light. So that's really what we've what our understanding is is that you know especially in the past two or three years we've seen a lot of people a lot of clients you know especially my sister who does a lot of the healing work of people coming in and the stuff that's affecting them physically emotionally mentally is usually connected to other lifetime traumas and so much here in this past month we've seen so much coming up too to be released other projections of lifetimes that come in and they bring their junk and then we start to feel and experience their stuff their projections so we're going to be bringing all of that junk into wisdom into light the ultimate goal is to not only take this little pocket of experiences and bring it into wisdom but to also bring this lifetime into wisdom. It's pretty amazing when we begin to do this work for our past lives and we begin to change traumas in that lifetime, time is malleable. Linear time as a soul here on the planet. We're really not experiencing past, present, future. Everything happens simultaneously from the soul perspective so from the soul perspective as you go back and you go to this lifetime and you clear its debris and you bring your light so in that lifetime that life we bring your light your soul light to that lifetime and as it begins to do the healing and clearing and release work this lifetime also changes we can change our current lifetime as well by simply going back through and releasing, clearing, healing those traumas that existed in your linear past. It can change the now. So the soul is not... Everything that the soul is and the soul does is not set in stone. Like people always talk about the Akashic Records and everything is set in stone. The Akashic Records are completely malleable. And so is, and so is this lifetime. And so the work that we do is all about bringing us into this zero point space that's full of wisdom, light, and consciousness and releasing, clearing, harmonizing, integrating everything else out here. Because, so let's say you have this experience, this, this really dense, dark experience, this traumatizing thing. When you bring it in, again, you are, your soul is untaintable, untouchable. It is, it acts as an alchemist. It alchemizes all of that dense, dark, traumas and everything else it alchemizes those into wisdom and light so when you are in this zero point space and things come up no matter how dense and dark they seem you invite them in to be transformed to be alchemized to brought in as wisdom light and consciousness so don't be afraid if things pop up and they're dark and you have the immediate reaction of oh my god that's dark that's not a part of me and you know and that's not my experience and be gone with you you know <laughs> for years Archangel Michael would ride on my shoulder and people would be like Michael why are you so dark and he'd be like well I'm helping Brian integrate the dark and the light and for years I never understood that I'm like no I'm not there's nothing dark I'm a light warrior damn it and I'm all about the light 
And, you know, as we all know, that is very much on a spectrum of duality of the light. The light who really follows the light can actually become rather dark because they're just focused in chasing the light. And we all see it. We've seen it in, you know, see it in TV shows. You see it in everyday life. Um, so it's, it's all about bringing in everything that you are in duality experience and bringing it in as light and wisdom. And wow, do you find peace here? After you keep doing this for a while, you find that you don't have those little harmonizer things within you that when something out here triggers you is triggering this thing that you're carrying you begin to release all these little things that you're carrying that are trigger points of something out here and you know a person does something and you're you feel it here you're like oh you know and then you're just all mad and judgmental and angry and everything else it's these little things that are being released. It's these little things that are a part of everything out here. And so these things we're bringing in. And as you release those and they turn to wisdom, you lose your triggers. You begin to step into peace. Not to mention on the metaphysical level where you are just brighter wiser and more potent and powerful in your creations so this is a really big part of doing the light work is doing that work within so that you clear all the darkness from your field in all of the I don't know if you call it false light but all of that light that you pursue just for the sake of fighting the dark because then you become a little dark anyway I'll step out of that and we're going to go ahead and jump into this zero point meditation. Now I called it the zero point meditation. As I um, mentioned, we have a, gosh, it was December 2nd of 2021, actually, that we did a uh, 50 questions Friday where we did the zero point meditation. Now we create, create here at Twisted Say Studios a thing called the Wisdom Wand. The wisdom wand is the tool, the physical tool that I've used to help me come into that space of peace when I was doing the clearing work. The zero point space is what I see this wisdom wand holds. So I see that when a person is holding this wand, and this is what we're going to do is we're basically going to attune yourself to the field through this wand if you wish. I'm going to take us into a journey and take us into the zero point meditation. But if you happen to own a wisdom wand, just know that this is something that you can do too, is you can use the field of the wisdom wand. To me, when you allow that field to be, that's what happens is that it creates this fibrous cocoon around you. Your soul does. So to me, I see it as almost like this reddish brownish fibrous cocoon that comes around you. Um, more like from right here to, you know, about the sacral chakra is, is about where I see this, this fibrous cocoon. And within it is your light, untainted and untaintable. It's just this bright, transformative light that's a magnet and an alchemist. It magnetizes and brings in more of your experiences when you're in this space. It's, it's like gravity. It just brings in all those experiences. And then it is also a transformer. As when it hits this space, it is transformed into wisdom light. And then all of this stuff out here is transformed. It's released. It's harmonized. It's brought into wisdom. Everything changes. So you can use the wisdom wand because to me, this creates that fibrous cocoon around you. That's why I wear the Wisdom Wand pendant all the time, too. Um, but I just want to share that with those of you who do have the tools or would like a tool so that you can help 
hold the space because again these are training wheels they do hold the spaces for you but they're not going to do the work um, now actually a lot of times when we're holding these spaces your soul is very much in there doing the work so a lot of stuff does happen when you're just in this space okay so we're gonna go ahead and jump into the meditation and again when we go into this meditation the visual is is that we're gonna come into the zero-point space we're gonna invite in all of your light throughout all time and we're just going to have your light amassed and we're going to then start to bring in all of these little points of experience and we're going to draw them in and alchemize them and we're not doing a thing all we're doing is we have this conscious awareness of what it is that we're doing kind of what this looks like and we're going to be soft and allow the soul to do the work because we're not the one that has to witness and transform and do the doing all we do is we sit back and we become this transformative field then we allow we allow the soul to bring in all experience and turn it into wisdom for us okay this is simple easy and profoundly powerful so here we go closing your eyes putting your attention to that brilliant heart And as you are grounded and connected with the earth, the heart of the earth, in the heart of creation, you as source, soul, creator, God. We've seen some aspects of the soul that are like these giant suns, a giant central sun in creation. And that is you. In all creation is you. Let's connect. To that aspect of us that is a giant sun in creation and allow that to expand within the heart within this field around you and we ask your soul to step in and we ask all aspects of you all lifetimes to begin to come into center and again, as they come into center, and aspects bring any of that unfinished business of oaths, vows, contracts, promises, or dense energies, or experiences, traumas, all of that is brought in as wisdom and light. So just keep allowing, intending that you bring in more of what you are as a soul. All lifetimes, all experiences, bringing it into center. In all of that that is outside of that beautiful fibrous cocoon, as it comes in closer, it's like I can almost hear all of these shifting, clicking, all of the stuff just unweaving, untangling, coming in as wisdom and light. This is a safe space to bring in all of those things if there's things that come up in your mind like this lifetime of traumas or regrets or all of this stuff bring those in too. allow those to come into this space to be released forgiven healed cleared brought into wisdom and light And if you can feel that in the physical body, 
your cells igniting. You can also simply intend and ask that that light stays present in your physical. is your light. And don't get into any conversations with any of your aspects between you as the human and your aspects because they would probably like to bring their perspectives and unfinished business and traumas and beliefs in and project them to you. This lifetime is about you, not your other aspects. This is about you as the human incarnate here and now. So you can allow all others to come into wisdom. Unfinished business, old oaths, vows, contracts, promises are released. They were there to serve in another time. Beautiful. So as you become brighter, more conscious, more you, You can then step out into the world carrying your light and not be a light warrior, but be a transformer, bringing your light and your wisdom, and your wisdom again is consciousness, soul, light. Your wisdom is an access through the mind. Your wisdom becomes potentials of the soul. So that as you begin to align with you as master creator, as the soul, that wisdom is used to create. So soon we're going to be stepping into, um, with this class, our next thing we're going to do will be light anchors. Though light anchors to me have traditionally been used in a way of fighting the dark. You can hear some of the ways that we've used light anchors in the clearing work of all the environment, of anything that we perceive as dense. Which is a very gray line between playing in duality and simply being conscious, realized, and full of light and wisdom, where you just shine your light. And where you shine your light, it clears things source. So that's the thing too, is that as we become more conscious, as we amass consciousness and light, that is the true light work. Because all we have to do is be in all of those around us. That light emanates. So when we do healing work, so like let's say you do healing work and the way we see it is, is that it is your soul that goes and holds space for another soul. So it's not you as the human doing the work, and it's not even your soul doing the work. Well, exclusively. We see that when the healing takes place, 
It is the person's soul that does the healing for them. But we come in and we hold space. So both of our souls are actually doing the healing work for you. And really holding that space, that space of alchemy and of light, others begin to hold that space too. It helps them alchemize all of their traumas, hardships, programs, beliefs, all the old projections from lifetimes past. All of that crap begins to fall away for them as well. That is the true light work, is holding space for others to shift, for humanity to shift. So it might be a little while before we bring out the light anchors tutorial. We have several tutorials on light anchors, but I just want to bring it in a way that is in alignment with where we're at and where we're going. Because I do not want to perpetuate any duality creation by using light anchors to fight the dark. But yet I had to bring this light workers class up because I do want to catch those out there who feel that they're light workers and are in that space of seeing everything as outside of yourself as dark and that this is energy outside of me and it's affecting me. Where I want to take us in these future classes, not light workers classes, we're going to call it something different. I want to take us to the place where we see that all energy that is outside of you is not outside of you. That all energy is yours and that all energy is serving you. And when we can start to make that switch in understanding, that is when you step into your realization that there isn't all this stuff outside of me that affects me and I'm just here, you know, on the, on the ocean just floating in my boat. We're stepping into us being creators. Powerful, powerful creators of our own reality creations and co-creations of all mass consciousness. Um, and we don't have room to play in that stuff. Anyway, I'm just going to get on a soapbox here, so I better get off my soapbox. And, and I think we're going to end this here. Um, you know, the again, really where I wish to take this whole journey of of sharing um, the wisdom, the light, and consciousness is going that direction for yourself, for your human, and for your soul, and not to be used for lighting the dark. And so I've been trying to find the name for this next series because so I think this is probably going to be the last of the series for, <laughs> for our light workers. And we're going to step into something more about working with your consciousness, your light. Working with your soul aspects, because that is a huge thing, is integrating all that you are so that you can come to peace. And so that you can become a sovereign, divine being. Because otherwise we are quite an eclectic collection of who we are. And it affects everything. And we want to bring everything into center alignment with the soul. In the human steps forward. With everything behind us. And that is exciting. And that is where we step into creation. So anyway. I will see you next time.